So today is Epiphany for 2021. Epiphany is a feast day and a season. And the word epiphany comes from the Greek epiphania, which means manifestation or appearance. And I've represented it with this simple flash of light because when we use the word epiphany, we often think of a light bulb going off or we say we saw the light. When we have an epiphany, it's as if we have a sudden realization of something that's true. Suddenly we can see what we were not able to see before and we recognize it and we understand a truth in a way that we were not able to before. And that's really not so different from the theological meaning of epiphany and the meaning of epiphany as a season in our church year. So again, it's from the Greek epiphania and it means manifestation or appearance, specifically the manifestation or appearance of God. And it's really a part of our series of um, the beginning of our church year coming from Advent into Christmas and now into Epiphany, January 6th. So this evening we'll be looking at the what, the why, and the how of Epiphany. All right, we'll begin with the what. So Epiphany is a feast day and it's also a season. January 6th today is 12 days after Christmas. So it's the 12th day of Christmas. I can't remember what my true love gave to me, but it's the 12th day of Christmas. And in many people's tradition, this would be a day where they might get their 12th gift. And it might be the day when um, the family finally puts away the Christmas decorations, perhaps having put the Christmas decorations up near Christmas Eve to begin the season of Christmas tide. But Christmas really exists from Christmas itself because before that it's Advent all the way to Epiphany. Of course, in our culture, it's really hard not to celebrate Christmas, at least in terms of putting up a tree uh, until December 24th. And honestly, it's pretty hard to keep your tree and all your decorations up until January 6th, but some people do it. And I did see the Wagner's tree and Christmas decorations still up in the background of their Zoom. So they have fully celebrated Christmas tide. Epiphany is not only just a feast day though, it's a season. So the season of Epiphany, the season of contemplating the manifestation or appearance of God in the person of Jesus lasts from January 6th through the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, which in our case this year, uh, 2021, is February 16th, Ash Wednesday being February 17th. So as it is with so many feast days, it's too much of a mystery to pack into one day we need a season to continue contemplating it. So we know a little bit now about what Epiphany is, but why? Why did um, the fathers and mothers of the church insist on making it a feast day and also a season? Well, in Advent, we wait for the incarnation and we prepare for the incarnation of God in human flesh. And then on Christmas day and throughout the Christmas season, the 12 days of Christmas, we celebrate the incarnation. So in Advent, the incarnation is coming. In Christmas, it's here. So it's time to celebrate. But then in Epiphany, it's here and it's going to continue to be here. And so it's time to contemplate the incarnation. After the celebrations quiet down, the season is there for us to open our minds and our hearts to the manifestation of God in Jesus Christ, to open our eyes and open our ears to where 
the light of Christ is in our lives and is in the world. And to really contemplate the mystery of God being present in Jesus. Now, what about the how of Epiphany? Well, there are lots of different ways to celebrate Epiphany and we'll get to um, some of the more fun, celebratory, cultural ways of celebrating in just a minute. But in terms of what are we doing theologically, how theologically do we observe Epiphany? It is a spiritual practice of looking for and recognizing Christ in our midst. And we do this primarily in terms of the lectionary, in terms of the hymns we'll be singing, the prayers we'll be saying, the scripture passages that the lectionary gives us that Bob will be preaching on. Um, we do this through story. And Epiphany recognizes three central texts that are primary for us as Christians for recognizing Christ in our midst. And the first is the arrival of the Magi. When Jesus was very small, um, not at the manger, we tend to conflate the Matthew story of the Magi and the Luke story of the birth of Jesus together. The Magi came just a little bit later in Jesus's life, although he was still very young. Um, the scripture says that the Magi came to his house, so not the stable where he was born. But the Magi are foreigners who arrive and seemingly miraculously um, with a faith that we don't quite understand, recognize Jesus as the Christ, recognize Jesus as a special kind of king. And then a little bit later in the scriptures, later in Jesus's life, in the baptism stories of Jesus, Jesus is recognized as a special kind of um, incarnation of God, as God's son, in whom God is well pleased at his baptism. And God, the Holy Spirit, certainly recognizes Jesus as such. And in some of the accounts of the baptism, we see the crowd recognizing Jesus as such. And then the wedding at Cana in the Gospel of John is another story that's often brought up in Epiphany where Jesus's miraculous turning of water into wine is a moment in which he is recognized um, as the son of God. I wanted to show you this piece of art, which I just thought was so beautifully symbolic of the the, the nature of the Magi as foreigners of outsiders it's a piece by Andrea Montaigne, painted around 1500 called The Adoration of the Magi. And I wanna invite you to consider that this image of foreigners worshiping Jesus, you know, other than the shepherds, um, this is the, this, this group of foreigners, astrologers from the East is the first group of people that we see having an epiphany about who Jesus is. Long before the disciples get a clue, um, long before um, certainly anyone who would call themselves a Christian as part of a Christian community years later would declare Jesus as Lord, these foreigners um, worship Jesus. And so the image of foreigners worshiping Jesus is an image of the gospel in that reading all the way through Matthew, especially though Jesus was born King of the Jews, which Matthew is very intent on us knowing, the good news of Jesus's birth is for all people, both Jew and Gentile. And the gospel of Matthew ends with the great commission, go forth, and make disciples of all the nations. So there's this radical inclusivity. There's a radical vision of inclusivity for this very particular group of people in ancient Israel to go and spread the good news.
And here's the scripture at the beginning of Matthew. So showing us that epiphany is God's love, not just for insiders. So I'm going to read the scripture and just let, let the story wash over you anew from Matthew 2, 9 through 12. When they had heard the king, they set out, King Herod, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left their own country by another road. So I, there's so much to unpack about the story that we don't have time for right now. Um, I'll let Bob do that in a sermon soon. Um, but I do wanna highlight the gifts that the Magi brought because they're, they're beautifully symbolic of how they were recognizing him. The gifts are symbolic of the quote epiphany that the Magi had had about who the child Jesus actually is. So they give him gold. Gold was a symbol of earthly kingship, a symbol of abundance and prosperity and wealth. So a gift fit for an earthly ruler. Frankincense is a kind of resin from a tree that was burned, sending a very fragrant smoke upward that was used in religious ceremonies, the frank incense rising upwards to carry prayers to God. So it's a gift that's symbolic of one who is a God, one who is divine. And then myrrh is another type of resin that was used to embalm dead bodies to keep them from smelling unpleasant, used in the ancient world. And Poignantly, the gift of myrrh symbolizes that part of the epiphany that the Magi had, Jesus is king, Jesus is of God, and Jesus's death will somehow be important. <laughs> when a baby is born, one of our first thoughts is not often, well, this baby is going to die. But of course, all of us will. Um, and certainly that's not part of a baby shower is a gift that's symbolic of death. But this myrrh, this gift of myrrh symbolizes the important death that somehow the Magi knew Jesus was to die. So I'd like to invite us to contemplate that part of the significance of Epiphany is that the love of God is for the whole world. The love of God through Jesus is not just for one group of people, but for all people. And I, 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 in for a connection to current events, I, I heard the quote the other day that if we are thinking of God as made in our own image rather than thinking of ourselves as made in the image of God, if God is made in our image, we will think God hates the people that we hate. We will make God to hate the people that we hate. Um, Epiphany calls us to do the opposite. Epiphany calls us to love the people that God loves. And the gospel shows us that God loves Jew and Gentile. So what are some of the concrete ways to celebrate Epiphany? Well, if you're extra disciplined and can keep your nativity scenes and your crushes out until January 6th, you can wait until today to put your magi in your nativity scene. You can even move them ever closer to the nativity scene from some remote place in your house. Um, 
throughout the 12 days of Christmas. You could sing the song, We Three Kings. You could enjoy king cake. You see a picture of the king cake with the little plastic baby Jesus buried in the folds of the pastry that you have to be careful not to get in your fork and actually put in your mouth. But the, the tradition goes that whoever gets the baby Jesus from the cake is king or queen for the next year. And then finally, uh, a theological tie-in, you can chalk your door. And so if you've ever seen this, the, the equation goes like this. For this year, it would be 20 plus C plus M plus B plus 21. 20 and 21 symbolizing the year that we're about, that we have embarked on. And then the C and the M and the B reference the traditional names of the three magi. Of course, we don't know that there were three. Um, and we certainly don't know that these were their names, but this is kind of the, the legendary contribution of Christian tradition that they were Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. But another way to think of the C, the M, and the B is the Latin Christus Mansionum Bindicat, and the C, M, and B are an acronym for that Latin phrase, which means may Christ bless this house. And so in many parts of the world and in some liturgical traditions in the US, people will chalk their door. And if we did it this year, it would look like this. In other words, in 2021, may Christ bless this house. And in 2021, may Christ bless us all for sure.